Well, that's lovely. Um, I could never sit in a room with any 70-year-olds <laughs> talk about anything. <laughs> Star Wars marries the epic and the intimate. It is so ambitious in its reach. It is set in a galaxy far, far away. It is about Jedis and Siths and rebellions and empires. But at its core, it's about human beings. It's about humanity. It's about families. It's about us. I think it's terribly relatable. Ah. <laughs> I like that I'm entering into a Star Wars universe that's offering up something kind of new to the already existing thing. To get to enter on this sort of ship that is really so well thought out and done with such integrity that I'm feeling very fortunate and privileged. I guess for me, because I, I, I grew up kind of watching the films as a kid, seeing something that is so honoring of the original story and mm. of the original universe. And the re response seems good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being welcomed into this family that extends from like, kids who are now six years old to adults who are in their 70s and 80s. The first interview today with that guy who I said was really young, but let's face it, he was kind of old. He is as excited about it as the 10 year old yeah. that interviewed us a couple of weeks ago. Like that doesn't happen on any other show, does yeah. it? You know, they could sit in a room together and have like this really intense conversation about Star Wars and its history. And that's amazing to yeah. me. I could never sit in a room with any 70 year olds <laughs> talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, delirious now. I believe that each Star Wars has its own identity. Each of them feels different, like a different child within that Star Wars world. Andor is very much interconnected and related to Rogue One. It feels grittier, shadier, darker. What's wonderful about where we start Andor this time is that there is no rebellion. We meet them at the moment where there is only rebellion within, which is an individual rebellion. They have yet to find each other. And that's exciting. Not fucking it up, that would be... Yeah, yeah, I think we had similar feelings in that yeah. respect. But also, yeah. we were filming it in, in, the pandemic. in the pandemic. So it was like, number one, stay alive, and number two, don't <laughs> fuck it up. Yeah, but also I do think we both come from a very strong yeah, theatre yeah. background. So you just go and do the show every night. I think that's what you get with a theatre background, is the ability to just shut off all the noise. Mm. I didn't really think about anything outside of it when I was working on it. I was really present in this grown-up fantasy world that I was allowed to walk around in the two death troopers. It was like being in some family drama. So true. Political thriller thing. Yeah. That just so happened to have kind of like space outfits. It's actually been nothing but a joy to get to return to this character because I've been given the opportunity to return to her at different stages of her life which are reflective of different stages of my life. We're learning about this woman, not just the senator, not just the role, but this woman, who she is, what her life is like, what her family life is like. I feel like this is the best moment for me to be part of telling that story. That's lovely. Um, there was a day that we were filming at Pinewood Studios and I was working with wonderful actor uh, Ben Miles and we had put our costumes on and then we came in and the whole set was populated with people from different parts of the Star Wars world. So creatures, you could feel a galaxy within a room. I've realized, oh, this is not just a spy thriller. This is Star Wars.